Are you a reader? I, I got more into it uh, towards the end of the pandemic, I will say. I was read I I was reading one book for so long that I'm the kind of guy that when I read a book, I I like have to finish it because I'll feel like a failure if I don't. Me too. You know? well, me Even though too. a lot of people pick up books and they put them down. But I was reading that book, The Seven Habits of Highway, the Stephen Covey book. And I just as soon as I got into it, I was like, it's it's dense as fuck. And I had to finish it. And I was trying so hard because, you know, you're also like, how do I be more productive? How do I increase my how do I fully optimize? And I think there's a lot there's a lot of helpful things in that book. But Jesus, it takes a, a while to get through it and finish. You know, it's amazing how successful the self-help books are. I think about it all the time. You know, those guys, there's a guy who makes a killing where, you know, the obstacle is the way is the one, the big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, people send me these books all the time. Like to read. They send them to me like strangers will just mail them to me because they think that I need help um, <laughs> because of stuff they hear. It's like their way of intervening and, and, yes. and rescuing me from myself. I care about you, Francis. Let me help. Yeah, but here's the problem, Dylan. All It's all so theoretical. And unless you're willing to read those books with, you know, a, a pen and to really annotate it and, and like actually take notes, um, yeah, messages that you'll take with you to try to employ throughout the day. It all blends together. It's it like really homework. does. It's fucking homework, dude. And mm -hmm. let me say something. I, to your point, I can't read a book unless I love it. And I want my reading to be relaxing in the same way that I want my TV watching yes. to be relaxing, which is why I only want to read books that I love. So I mostly read novels and I'll, I'll read some good, you know, historical fiction or nonfiction. Yeah. If it's, if it's really interesting to me. Uh, but, but I, I can't, I can't really, I can't fucking handle the, the, the I, books. I, th I, I like to read something that makes me feel stimulated or like that it's helpful. Like a lot yeah. of times, uh, if I don't feel like I'm going to use what I'm reading in life, sometimes it's hard for me to read it. Unless, of course, it's a novel. Like at night before I go to sleep, I like to read some kind of science, like science fiction because it uh, apparently is helpful for sleep if you read something before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. uh, I also heard this quote by a guy that I, that I really liked where he was like, a guy who doesn't read only lives one life and someone who reads can live a thousand because of all that and i was like okay that's a that's a good enough for me i i, I do kind of all right yeah I'll, I'll read some novels but the self-help stuff you got yeah i i think the best way to do it is to if you're going to read them because there are helpful ones uh, yeah. uh, uh stephen covey's did come give did give me some takeaways that i enjoyed one of the biggest ones i think was the um the idea of your circle of influence meaning like you know what can you a lot of times we're focused on things that we can't directly change. You know, why don't, why am I not uh, more famous? But a lot of these things that they don't have, you're not in direct control of them. So instead of focusing on those things that frustrate you, if you focus on things that you can actually control, it'll at least lead to less frustration. So I was like, okay, that's a good takeaway. Let me remind myself of that. But you do have to either write notes or refer back to it. It, it, it can be tiring. And also I think maybe as, comics nihilists or whatever some of the self-help like i am king tell myself that i'm beautiful every day and i can do everything we go i mean yeah but fuck off like you know we can't some days and some days i'm a piece of shit and i slept in till 11 a.m and i can't do anything i'm already behind by four hours you know yeah, yeah exactly it, i i agree with that and for me you know what's more helpful is the uh the marie kondo stuff oh i haven't read that or i haven't watched it she's the she's the subtle i know who she is yeah she's the up or like the, the yeah the subtle art of tidying up something like that yeah yeah whatever it's called and those those messages are so impactful but that that's like straight up bullet points on how you can organize your life and, and i i thought i think that's a, a much more 
you know, employable strategy based thing. You could put it into a, into practice. How, how have you watched a lot of Marie Kondo? No, I, no. I don't. Want to <laughs> Someone will tell me like one sentence about what she said. And I'll be like, that actually makes sense. Isn't you know? it great that when someone recommends someone, you can hear two bullet points of it and then immediately go, you should really check out this girl, Marie Kondo. She, yeah. I love her. And they go, Oh <laughs> yeah. But, but, but I would never say I'm a huge subscriber. I know. I, oh, I know. I'm, I'm just, I do the exact same thing. I'm yeah. completely aware. Yeah. But, but yeah, hey, I mean, I want to ask you about your, I want to ask you about your dating life. Let's hear it. What's happening. Um, well, first part of quarantine, pretty, pretty shitty. It was a lot of, Whoa, what just happened? Where's the, so oh, I just, sorry. My, my screen just completely went blank. First part of quarantine, uh, not great. Uh, a lot of sexting, dude. A lot, a lot of sexting, which I'm, I'm sure you didn't experience because you uh, have a, a lovely girlfriend. Yeah. Correct. Still girlfriend. Wait, I know she's fiance. Are you, are you, you're sexting with people, but you've never met them? Is that a thing? Never met them, dude. Whoa. So you, are you exchanging pictures with each other? That's right. That is so fun. Good for oh, you. it's a lot of it's, uh, it's scary and exciting. Yeah, because some of the people I'm like. You might not be real, but hey, fuck it. I'm not Army Hammer, you know. At least I'm not him. Yeah, yeah. Well, hold on. So, so I, I've heard, I heard about that Army. We'll t- we'll talk about that. Yeah. Did you get on Facetime with these people? A couple, yes. So, girls got to eat. Hooked me up with one that was a big Facetimer. She, me and her did some fun stuff on Facetime. I will admit, we okay. I haven't talked about this. <laughs> I <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I live vicariously through you jerking off. You Let's got talk. it. You got it. You got. You know, I have some friends that are like, you know, they're in long term, and they're just like, dude, let me hear it. So yeah, yeah. So this girl, sh- we were having we were having fun on Facetime. Uh, I, as a man, is want to do finished first. Uh-huh. Okay, she yeah. wanted to keep going. And I was like, I want to take a shower. So she was like, bring the camera into the shower and then I'll keep going. And so then I basically FaceTimed someone while I showered and they were, yeah, it was, I only did it once, but I was like, that, that's the thing about me, dude, is I'm like, I'll always do it once. Uh-huh. That's uh, cool. And it's also someone that I mean, I wouldn't do that with someone I just met. This is a girl that I was like, she's not going to do anything shady. Yeah. And yeah. Most people don't realize it's pretty obvious when you screenshot something on FaceTime because uh, a big flash goes off. Right, right. You know. So, so let me pause you for a second, though, because this is fascinating to me. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, and I think this is true of a lot of guys, when I'm pleasuring myself to uh-huh. pornography, yeah, and then I finish, the second I finish... Disgusted. I'm, I have to exit everything. I can't, I can't leave it on the screen. I can't even fathom. It, it's almost it. like you just disassociated from that person. And he's gone. Yes. Right. Oh, so I know. For you to be all over yourself and then get it <laughs> to the and then, and, and then still have to somehow like be sexy and maybe, maybe you were still turned on, but like, I, I was not. Okay. Yeah. Just, just to, to have to care. How long, how long did this girl continue to go? I think five, 10 minutes, maybe. That's just, that is, <laughs> that is an that's ages, ages of ages. It now, is ages. You know, you can't, you can't shower the way you want to, which is like disgusting. Loofa, yeah. 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 You know, the right. You can't use uh, head and shoulders. You can't really get yeah. clean. You can't get and, in your asshole. You can't be, you can't be scrubbing the ass crack. Yeah. No, you can't, you can't. But because it's the first time, the excitement of this being new overpowered the, I want to get away from this. And also I had a task. I was like, I need to shower. I'm not going to focus on this girl, this woman, by the way, she's over 30. So she's a woman. Uh, I, I just washed. She seemed to be having a good time. And then I was like, I'm going to go finish up. And she said, okay, you know? I see. I see. So 
Uh, did you talk to her while you were in the shower? I might have said a few things, yeah. You were spurring her on. You I might like, have egged her on. I definitely egged her on. I encouraged her. I said, can this, you, know? you can do this. <laughs> yeah, you can oh, do this. Bro. I believe in you. Keep great form. I said, great form. You're doing great. You know, maybe, maybe, because uh, it seems to me, women, they, they, they like a narrative. They want to imagine what would happen, you know? Guys, right. we're much more, you know, much more, much more just visual. We need like, to see what are you it. Doing? Yeah, what are you exactly. doing? Right what are you now? doing? Let me see it. I don't care what you would do if you were here. I just want to see it. Great That's point. it. Great Whereas point. the girl, she wants to imagine what would you do? How would you do it? Expl like they, they want much more description, you know. I, I've noticed that, especially in sexting, they want they want the buildup, you know. If you're yeah, sexting you're getting, a girl, you want to be like the marrow of it here. This is really the good stuff. Exactly. Yeah. This is the good stuff. You want to be, you don't want to just say, oh, if I was there, I would do this. You want to be like, I would love to be getting dinner with you. And then you walk to the bathroom and you give me a look. I text you, da da. da. I walk in, I go to the stall next to you, I say something, then I walk in slow, and then you go. They want to, they want to feel like they're there, dude. It's you gotta really, really paint the picture. Yeah, they, yes. they're good at, at, at feeding off of an imagination that's that's being conjured in the moment. In the moment. Um, and that's crazy to me, but it, I think it also speaks to uh, the fantasy land that mm -hmm. women occupy, which I, I have a hard time being in. My girlfriend will routinely mm -hmm. recount vivid details of dreams that she had you know, later in the day, like many hours after we've woken up, wow. I don't remember any of my dreams, none whatsoever. Never. And so I do think that there is some kind of strange disconnect there. I wonder what that's all about. Yeah, I think I've, I've heard also just from women in general that they like to picture themselves there. I, dude, I've had girls tell me that they had a fantasy about someone and that's all they used. They didn't even need to think, they didn't even need to see anything. They just thought about what would happen. You know, wow. I had a girl, I mean, this is extreme, but she told me that she wants, I don't think a guy could ever do this. She once masturbated to the idea of getting a Grammy, which I mean, bravo to her for how narcissistic she is, but also that's impressive, you yeah. know? That's, that's really um, blending your professional dreams and your sexual yeah yeah but so that was good and then once i got back to new york uh there was a lot of going to central park dating that way um a couple facetime dates not a big fan of facetime dates they're not they're not great um it's like weirdly intimate and at the same time not and then yeah. now i'm just if i think someone's cool and i talk to them a little bit i'll go meet them for drinks but where are you meeting them for drinks anywhere outdoors at like a place that still has an outdoor bar yeah. with some kind of heaters you're bundling up and and you know sitting under maybe a heat lamp or something like exactly that. bundle up sit under a heat lamp or, is, is can it be freezing or do you you try to find nights where the weather's a little bit more mild i'd say 40 and above is okay yeah. if it's yeah. under 35 or if it's under 40, 38, it's, it's getting cold. And then, you know, you can be, you can say, Hey, it's a little cold. Maybe we just go to one of the others and we just hang out there and we, you know. Right. Right. But, but neither of you are worried then about having a sort of a stranger come into your home with, with COVID. Mm, I think so. Well, sometimes they've been like, when's the last time were you tested? And yeah. so if you're, if I'm dating, I haven't been dating a lot the past three months because I was seeing one girl, um, which is no longer happening anymore. But now it's like, you get a COVID test, you say, Hey, I, I tested, I, I tried it out. You, you, you do the best you can. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I don't, I don't begrudge you. I'm not, I'm not judging at all. Yeah. I, I'm just fascinated by how people are now Eating. And, and this comparison was made a long time by lots of people, but like how, how the COVID and where have you been? And when did you get tested question is as 
is as common, if not more common, of course, than than the same question applying to STDs. And the STDs. COVID is even more because there's no shame involved in COVID, whereas there's shame in the STD. People people feel no fear asking you about COVID, whereas the yeah. you know, the STD test they still feel kind of. I think the STD test for me the most has been. Um, if it seems that we're going to stop using protection, I'll be like, all right, we got to, you know, we got to, we got to discuss this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, when's the last time you were single in New York? Oh, probably two and a half years ago. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you remember, but uh, people were before the pandemic, people were pretty well, lax. Dylan, I remember. <laughs> I remember everything. Yeah, you th- here's the very thing. Very hard to remember. You think you miss it, buddy. You think you miss it? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think that's not what I mean. <laughs> no, I know. I just cling to these. You know, you have the memories. That's the best part about the single memories is because you know what? All those memories are better than they actually were. Of course. The of highlights. Course. It's the highlight reel of your single life. Yes. 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 Which is yeah. great to have. But what, what were you going to say? You, I, if I, I don't know you said, I don't know if you remember. Oh, but, uh, before pandemic, people were pretty lax about just protection in general. <laughs> like, has that changed? Uh, no, right now, no, people are, are pretty, uh, I'd say pretty serious or, or cautious about it. Would you but, say that they're more serious now than they were? I would say overall, people are, are more serious in general about being safe. And I think uh that bleeds over into the um sexual wellness as well i think people are more worried about getting covid however because of that i i think this pandemic has made people just a little bit more scared of germs in general Mm -hmm. so they're just like uh, let me protect all holes all orifices as much as i can you know you know, it, it, they, there's been a lot of talk about how we are standing on the precipice uh, on the, at the this is the dawn of a of a new age of sexual freedom and, mm-hmm. and wild, you know, orgies and, and a, a, a new roaring 20s that will be led by the by the, the young 20 year olds, the kid, the college kids who kind of had a year or two ripped away from their most most fun partying years. Yes. And then, and that the younger generation is going to kind of just go nuts um, mm-hmm. on each other as soon as as soon as they can. Um, are you anticipating that? Are you going to participate in that? Well, I, that's the question, Francis. Is is am I allowed to? Yeah. Am, am I allowed to participate if the younger generation? Because I don't want to be the thirty-two year old that the ah, the yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> you you're you're totally under the under the age. You know, there's age, no yes. It's just if you're single or not, I think. I will be, most likely. Yeah. <laughs> Based on where I'm at right now, what I'm looking for, not going to say that I couldn't meet a girl that would uh, change my mind, but right now it just seems that that's not really in, um, that's not really in the cards is mm-hmm. something really serious. I've been trying. COVID made me try a little bit more and reconsider, and it still just seems right now that – that ain't in the cards, so I probably will be part of the Roaring Twenties. And guess what? I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Right. Let me uh, I, go back because I, I was fascinated by what you were saying. So you were saying that um, you're going to take advantage of it, and dude, you know what? You, you you've earned it. I think by, by struggling through anyone who didn't have the comfort of a significant other or a partner, you know, mm-hmm. through this and had to endure lots of like lonely nights or nights where you wish you had the payoff to that or on the other side going to be completely unencumbered and and allowed to sow your wild oats however you exactly and i think it'll be you know we've never had our roaring 20s so now we get to try it out uh have a i think not i'm not even here's the thing I'm, i'm not even really thinking that much about dating when it goes down because i think it'll be good i think i think it'll be a lot of fun we'll we'll see what happens in new york that's all great i think i want to see how this is going to change comedy because i i've heard a couple comedians say they think there might be a return to goofier less heady comedy after this um pandemic jim carrey style kind of absurdist stuff we'll see i'm unsure but i mean 
even if you look at uh, like TikTok and the, the stuff that does really well there, a lot of it is very fucking stupid and yeah. absurd in a yeah. good and bad way. Right. No, I, 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 that's, I haven't, I haven't heard that. It's interesting. I haven't heard anything about goofiness. I thought you were going to say a return to people being a little less sensitive. Um, that too. And letting things fly uh, a little more, but I, it's so funny. What, what do you think would make people feel that way? Because I, I was talking to a friend about this. I, I think the past year we've seen more um i'd say critical junctures flashpoints acts of violence almost that like the past year has given us a lot to deal with you mm -hmm. know uh, the past four years for sure but 2020 you know our kids one day are going to have a test where they have to list different dates of things that happened it just in 2020 yeah. Just yeah. when they study the history of America and the knots and the teens, 2020 is going to be, it's going to have a paragraph of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's going to have pandemic. I mean, all the shit that happened before the pandemic, um, Mossadegh or not Mos um Soleimani, the fires in Australia. And then you have the Russia investigation. Then you have George Floyd. Then you have surges. Then you have the election, the fraud, and then you have the capital on Twitter. Like there's so many events and there's more I'm probably forgetting that I yeah. think people are kind of, they want to maybe not think about anything and just be, just laugh about stupid everyday stuff yeah. that makes them goes, uh, makes them go, oh, I, uh, this is nice. I don't have to think, I, I don't have to get a take because everyone's so triggered now by, um, both sides being so divided and the, the divisiveness in the country, they're like, look, can we just laugh at someone falling down? Can we laugh at like that kind of stuff or just yeah. absurdist things? I think especially maybe millennials and who knows about Gen Z, they seem to be, I don't even know, uh, good and bad. They, uh, I think millennials are going to be like, I need, we need a break, dude. Seriously. Everyone yeah. says that. We, I think we do. But right. who knows? <laughs> Seriously, that's fun. I like the sound of that. That's uh, yeah. yeah. I like Goofy. I like Goofy for sure. Because if you think about it, the you know the past ten years have been more and more uh, introspective comedy to a certain degree, or trying to make a political point or some kind of social point about it. And not that that will stop. There still will be the greats of it. There'll still be the Chappelles. Uh, people making stuff like that. But I, I think people will welcome those alternative, uh, less important mm -hmm. forms of comedy. Lower stakes. Uh, lower stakes. I don't want to call it um, lower brow because I think that is a negative connotation, but low brow in the sense of, you know, Sandler, Carrie, that kind of dumb stuff, but done well, not done... Because those, like, Sandler was good, and then for whatever reason, I don't know what the fuck happened, but it's like, they, did you watch that that uh, Halloween movie he came out with? Kirby or whatever it's called? No. I mean, in the first five minutes, I went, yeah, they've gone too far with this. Al I, already, I knew that whatever baseline they were trying to set was over the top and too much. And I was upset because, I, you know, I love Adam Sandler. I want him to... But for whatever reason, it's like they feel the need to make stuff unbelievable in how absurd it is, you know? Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't I haven't seen um, the movie. You know, I think uh, I do think that like Sandler maybe maybe bought into your point a little bit of of just saying, like, I want to be providing accessible comedy to as many people as possible. Like, I don't need you, I don't want people to, and who knows, but like maybe, you know, maybe he said like, I don't want people to need to be a Democrat to think I'm funny or yeah. need to be a Republican to think I'm funny or need to be smart or need to be whatever, old. Um, you know, he's appealing to a very broad swath of people, including people in all kinds of different countries. His material, his movies are streamed 
in Brazil. He's a megastar in Brazil. Really? Yeah, he's huge in Brazil. He's huge, I think, in Korea. He's like, you know, and a lot of those, they're all watching his movies either dubbed or with subtitles. And, you know, you can't exactly watch uh, Bill Maher dubbed or I I don't think... I don't think it translates. I mean, it's hard enough to watch him undubbed, you know? Yeah. So or if it's like, let's say, no, let's say John, John Oliver is a good Oliver. Yes. Right. You can't, you got to speak English really well and really quickly to follow what he is saying. 100%. And how funny it is. Um, even Andrew Schultz, like, is another example where, like, I, I watch his, I watch his stuff that he did, the Netflix specials he did. And it's so it's fast. So good, but like, it's i gotta be i can't be stoned to watch you it you have to be fully <laughs> watching you yeah, almost have to watch I, it a I couple times anyone around i have to be like this is you know i'm in here because it's so it's so dense and so and so good um i've also found that i don't know about you if you i definitely smoked more weed once the pandemic started and, and, and I think most people did, but <laughs> more weed, more edibles, edibles yep. are a yep. fun one. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I found, uh, yeah, I'd eaten them all just like night and day. Oh, did I, I didn't tell you, um, for the election, I, I went to go see Raina. Uh, she had a couple people over. I said, hi, I yeah. watched a little bit of the election. Um, I took uh, a double dose of edibles Nice. Uh, thinking that it wasn't that strong uh, and uh right as it looked like trump was gonna win i started peeking and mm-hmm. i was like i have to leave and so i just went home to see my brother and just laid on the couch like it was you know when you eat something and then when you, or you take everyone's taken too many edibles and it's when you eat it and you feel yourself going up on the roller coaster mm-hmm. and you feel think you've reached the top and it dips and then it goes no 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 there's another and you go oh i have i have made a mistake (laughs) that is that's exactly what happened to me in real time Uh and i i was with andrew collins was watching me or andrew collins was watching me and he goes i mean the amount of cured meats that you just ate (laughs) i ate so much salami soprasada like pepperoni and he was like you were shoving it into your mouth and that's when i knew that it was it was too much it, it was too much oh you just went for the charcuterie i destroyed her charcuterie board because no one was yeah. fucking eating it because there are all people there who like to pretend that they don't like to eat and mm-hmm. so i said well i'm eating this and i took home some of it because she's like no one's gonna eat it <laughs> that's how high i was charcuterie. I, took home charcuterie. <laughs> I took home charcuterie i took home goat cheese you took home not even like an appetizer but just a cured <laughs> decorative meat food you decorative took- food I took home food that most people would go, it's okay to not be eaten. And I said, no, 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 no. The Italian in me will not allow this to not be eaten. Sitting out on a board. Room Didn't temperature. care. <laughs> I brought it all home. I salted it more. And then I just ate it for the rest. Of the, I ate it the rest of the night. It was, it, it was quite a time. Dude, I got to tell you, you know, it's funny. I, um, I'm not a huge charcuterie guy I, i'll have a little tiny bit but that is something that like i don't have a hard time mm-hmm. uh eating eating in moderation and i think part of it is um you know that scene in the wolf of wall street where jonah hill they're they're really falling apart on the quaaludes yes yes and jonah hill starts eating uh like some kind of cured meat or mm-hmm. it, whatever and he starts choking on it oh and and then leo has to like do cocaine in order to perform the heimlich on him and he, oh yeah it's such a great scene but that scene always freaked me out a little bit like foods that i then i think i could choke on and for some reason uh i've choked on a lot of foods <laughs> i uh i'm not even lying i i have a problem i'm like a dog i sometimes chew not enough I chew slower than I sh- – way too slow, and I just swallow it. I go, oh, it should be good. I cannot tell you how many times I have stood over the sink that's right over there alone trying to get something out of my mouth thinking I might die right now. You 
gotta be careful, man. I know. You gotta slow down, you know, and and make sure you've got a, a water handy when you're eating. See, but the problem is sometimes it gets caught. You drink the water, the water doesn't push it down, and then you have water caught here. Dude, oh, you've never had that? You're, you're telling me that you. <laughs> Follow bites that are so big and so unchewed that they literally clog your throat. Nothing liquid can't like a bath drain. You have bites of food that are just <laughs> wedged. If you eat a lot of rice, sometimes it gets. <laughs> <laughs> You know how much rice pieces of rice are small. It should fall. Not like when snow you get, take a big, a big mouthful and you just try to swallow it, or sometimes some, some really thick sourdough bread that's got a hard crust. It I just see that. it soaks the water that. up. I've had it with meat. I've had it with some ground beef. Yeah, right? yeah, I just steak tried is to the classic one. Steak yeah. would be the one that I would say is the most risky. Oh, dried mango. I almost died eating dried mango. Oh, geez, man. Gee, it's, it's, I get excited, man. I want it. So, I want it so bad in my stomach that I just go, I'll figure it out. I, I'm overconfident about the size of my throat, which I think is a thing that probably not a lot of straight men have ever said in their life, but I am one of them. And I'm going to say it. I'm overconfident about the size of uh, the canal going down to my stomach. Okay. All right. But here's, here's my question for you. Yes. You said something interesting there, which was that you said you want it in your stomach so bad. Mm -hmm. So the joy of eating for you yes. is not so much the taste of it in your mouth, mm -hmm. but it's the feeling of the Tetris blocks of food settling into your stomach. Yeah. Well, it's as it's like, I get it in my mouth. It's great. And I see more on the plate. And mm. I want I want more of that. Even though it's in my mouth, I go, but that's uneaten because the because <laughs> the, the best the best food hasn't been put in your mouth yet. Okay, once it's in your mouth, the saliva, all the stuff is on it. That's the, fresh. The, the fresh food is the one that you want the most. So yeah, that's dump that in there. <laughs> take a bite, and then you go. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm a dog, and you go. Oh my God, more food. And then you you get that food as well until you're finished with your plate. And I'm an animal, dude. That is really a, funny, a, man. A complete animal. Well, you know, I've had I've had big friends my whole life. You're a big guy. Yeah. Um, big big guys tend to eat differently. For sure. They, you you strike me as someone who eats very fast. Uh, very fast. A lot of times I'll be at dinner. And uh, I'll get a sandwich. Someone else will. I will be done with the full sandwich before someone is done with half of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I know people like you and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just kind of your pace. It's My not, pace. you're not even, that's your pace. That's what you said. It's like when some people go for a jog and they, they just jog at, at six minute mm -hmm. mile pace for some reason and it's like, dude, what are you doing? You know, nobody yeah. should run fast. Nobody should eat that fast. But you. It's my internal you, clock. My metronome yeah. is going faster. You know how a lot of times uh, some people like slower music. They like to walk slower. They talk slower. That their internal metronome is slower. Mine is about 150 BPM. Okay. that That's what mine is. I think that's why I like more electronic music. Uh, and when I eat. I swear to God. And when I eat, dude, it's I, uh, growing up. I remember my, my mom, my family would always be like, no one's stealing the food. You're okay. Yeah, you can yeah. calm down. But it's, uh, but everyone on my dad's side is like this, all the Italians, all the Paladinos, the food is put in front of them. They don't talk and they just start, they just start eating. And it's like, we're so excited yeah. to be fed because the thing with me is that I'm almost always hungry. So if you put food in front of me, I'm going to eat it and I'm going to eat it fast and I'm not going to talk to you. There are times where my stepmom has gone, has gone while I'm eating. She's like, where is it all going? Because I'm just eating pancakes and eggs and, and it's, it's, I don't know either, but it's just, yeah. 
I gotta, it's, it's a, it is a tall guy thing though, for sure. You get it and you, you want to, well, you have that like sort of swimmer's body too, that like the broad shoulders and yeah. the, you could just put it away. Um, do you make an effort when you're on a date with a girl, uh, let's call it a dinner date mm -hmm. to change your pace? Yeah, I'll slow down. I'll definitely slow down. Um, however, I mean, when, when, when you dated, what was your, what, what was your mindset? What was your, your strategy? Did you go in and try to say, uh, I'm going to tamp down this side of myself or did you come in full Francis? Because recently for me, I've decided to just go in full Dylan and if they don't like it, I can just go on to the next one. Yeah. I think that that comes with age. I think okay. that, uh, you know, you, you get to a point where you're like, there's no reason to hold back on who I am because I don't, I have less time to, to fuck around. You exactly. Know? Okay. Um, but when I was, cause so when I was single, yeah, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't reveal my, my whole self psychosis on, right. on the first, you know, look, I hate to say it, I remember it. being single. Usually the, the mentality was like, let's try to see how our, our sexual chemistry is yeah. before we commit to, for sure, uh, to really helping each other and getting to know each other. Like, yes. You know, <laughs> psych yes, yes, yes. Psychoses. And, um, because if, if one, if, if that was a non-starter, then it's like, well, there's no point in it's not going to happen telling her how I feel about my dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. why don't, well, we're not even going to uncouple it. We're not going to, there's no, there's no Look, reason. If, if I don't want to fuck you, I don't care about your parents. Okay. So it's <laughs> like, what are you yeah. going to? Yeah. Cause it's so much work. It's so much work to start fixing each other mm -hmm. um, that, if you if you go down that road and then you find out that you you don't like her riding style or she doesn't like your equipment uh you you've wasted you've wasted that that difficult bonding process sure. so i don't know i i think i recall in my singlehood not really thinking too much about um being being you know, totally transparent with who I was mm -hmm. and letting it fly. I think, I think the first, you know, those first three dates are always a pretty kind of a bullshit job interview. Uh, yeah. Let's see if we can at least get the job uh, without any kind of commitment to see if I even like my desk. Cause I don't like my desk. I might not be staying at the job. If they don't have a good stapler. Okay. If the monitor size isn't, <laughs> they don't have good benefits. Uh, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> exactly know. what are what are the references? Well, you said something interesting. You said, um, you know, you talked about your equipment and then you said you don't like their writing style, which is interesting to me. Are you aware of the writing style of women that you were with before? Because personally to me, the writing style has never been at the top of my mind. Because I you saying, are you saying writing style riding? Yeah, that's what I said. Yes, as a horse. Yes. <laughs> Riding sexually when she's on top of you moving back and forth. And to me, my least favorite part of sex, because you just you just revealed something very, very important, which is you said you said when she's on top moving back and forth. Mm -hmm. and there, there you have it. You is, it. That to me makes me think that you've been faced with a lot of what I call East West riders. Ah, uh, okay. Whereas, whereas I, I, I am more privy to a north, north south. North south, ride. yes. And, and and don't think of your don't think of your compass as like a this way, that's way. You just mean you're talking I mean, more on horizontally. A plane, on, on yes, a plane. on a plane, on a plane. Right. Yes. yes. The the up down rider, right? Mm -hmm. like true, a true equestrian, you know, <laughs> cantering, right? That is to me the preferable riding yes. style. Versus the, you know, surfboard, surfboard, beyond surfboard, say, surfboard, surfboard. You know, yes. Don't get me wrong. I understand that women prefer the, surf the surfboard east west. Yes. That's fine. By all means, have at it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're getting to the point where you're grinding off my pubic hair 
and we're we're it's a it's a fire hazard. If uh, I smell tinder, we need to right. Yes. Yeah. Then then you know we have to draw the line because it mm-hmm. gets painful. But it's it should be hopefully a bit of a mix. You know. Okay. Yeah. I, I've always been a bit wary of the north south with her completely in control because i've had a couple accidents where the equipment has almost been broken and uh it's scary or it comes out you know maybe you know hey maybe you're drunk or maybe you're just having an okay time and it slips out and it it might not be able to slip back in yes yes you 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 hit the nail on the head here this (laughs) this is huge because I, I, when I was, I think 24 or 25, I had a friend who I was, I was staying in a classic, you know, Montauk share house mm-hmm. and I was sleeping in the basement on, on a, some shitty bed. Uh, That'll and, sound really good in your memoir. Yeah. One of, yes. one of the, my buddy was in a bedroom with a, with a girl mm-hmm. and I remember, I, I swear to God, Dylan, I was just dozing off and I heard what sounded like somebody what you'd imagine somebody dislocating a kneecap oh you heard the pop dude i heard the pop of his penis and then i heard him go oh stop and then he got like that he didn't say it with more he was super fucked up and he goes he think he goes then i heard him go i think i broke my dick and she she was like what and then he like came out This is so, it was so bad. It was so bad. Um, he came out and he looked at his penis and I, and he told me to come over. No. And it was, it was, it, it looked no! like it had an elbow. Dude, it looked oh. like it had an elbow. It was, it was completely bent and there was this huge inflammation. Oh, fuck. He had to go to the East Hampton Hospital <laughs> at three in the morning and the broken cock they they apparently this happens all the time and the doctor was like you're not the first person that we've seen tonight and they had to go they i, I hate to get graphic because let's really hear it they go in and they sew it from the inside so they like repair i think they repaired his cartilage on the inside by sewing it from the inside and dude he had a catheter in his in his penis and a a pee bag you know taped to his leg for like a week and he like couldn't go to work he had to call in sick for work and he had to be honest i broke my penis he, he was i think he was like i had a really bad accident with my genitals and dude, he was more unhappy. Like after the laugh, we didn't. We we only laughed about it for like that night because he was so uncomfortable and so unhappy uh, for the for the time that he had this catheter in, and it was just so traumatic. Like, yeah, I mean, I can imagine. That's the, that's every guy's biggest fear. Yeah, and and then to your point, after that. Whenever you know a lady was was north southing, um, I found myself holding. Yes, you know, to make sure she didn't exceed. Your got your 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 glide scope for a plane yeah, as it comes back in. Is, yes, I knew my dimensions better uh-huh. than she did. So so I would hold the butt cheeks. Uh huh. Like, like to to keep the top exactly. Off, like, guide know? it. You got to guide yeah. it. I mean, it's, it's to the, well, but I I don't know about you. I personally, it, if you're going North South, you don't have to be getting an airborne enough that your equipment leaves her garage. I don't think so. There's the rub, right? Because here's the thing, the, 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 the longer the stroke, Mm -hmm. the better it feels. Yes. If If you're just mid shafting, if you're staying in the kiddie pool, you know, fine it's gonna be okay i want a full range of motion but that's when you start you know you're dancing with the devil at that point you are and i think that's that's maybe really there i heard you yeah i I would say that's maybe a relationship sex i think to be or more drunk sex that you're like uh i'm gonna roll the dice 
but uh, but dude dude i have i have one little point for you which is this one yes. time one time uh it was shortly after my friend broke his penis i was i was with a girl that i was seeing and uh she got into you know the squat position um oh yes frog right? frog to- yeah, there's there's less of a risk if she's on her knees and she's on top. Um, okay. For some reason, I just I, I don't know why I, I find I find that there's less risk that way. Okay. Yeah. But if she's on her feet and she's you know riding going around, up and down, to me that's a that's a lot scarier. And I remember saying as she did this, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, hang on, be careful. And she knew what I was worried about, mm-hmm. and I swear to God, she goes. Don't worry, I played catcher on my softball team. I know what I'm doing. And for some reason, that was the most reassuring credit. It makes no sense, but also I would have been like, okay, cool. Instantly, I felt like I was in safe hands. Fully felt safe, comfortable. Yeah. Uh, there's no chance that it's going to happen. I mean, honestly, that's kind of hot to me. I don't know why. That's the first time a girl being a catcher has been hot to me. And that go. right there, she's like, don't worry. I know what I'm doing. It also yeah. insinuates she's bounced like that on a lot of other dicks. And guess what? At that point, I want you to be a freaking aficionado in Show dick me. bouncing. Show, Show me. me. Like you no. Know. <laughs> Let me see. Okay. Because if not, I'm going to be fucking taking my phone flashlight to make sure everything's going okay. Because yeah. I'm because I'm worried. Hey, yeah. just so you know, uh, that the anatomy of it, what happens is there's something called uh, the two cylinders, the corpora cavernosa. Mm. One of them is ruptured. And then the tunica albuginia is filled with uh, with with blood very quickly. Yeah, wow. I wouldn't mind having a little glass of Cabernosa with a can of <laughs> tuna cona, uh, you know, every once in a while. It sounds like a decent blend. That's true. Now, when when he showed you, was it uh, already extremely bruised? And like, do it you was, remember? It was, it was uh, I, I don't really like, I don't really know how to, do, it, I wouldn't say it was discolored so much as it, 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 it kind of looked like, Imagine if you had a, a broken arm, but the bone didn't break through the skin. Ah, uh, and and it was just a there was just oh a bend. god, it was a bent real, dick, a very clear like bend and 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 bad trauma, and he he was really worried, and and then the whole house woke up. I can't. Oh, and, I'm sorry. It's so funny that he thought he needed to show you to be like, hey, does this seem okay? Because. Well, <laughs> Yeah, but but nobody else knew. And then we had one of my friends in the house uh, who's he's now married and was, was very seriously dating a, a nurse. And so she came and looked and she knew she was like, there, that's bad. Um, and so then he got a someone brought him a jar of Smucker's jam from the refrigerator and he held that against his penis oh oh as an ice pack that's what they had they didn't have any ice or anything it was it was a shit show man wow like we were all kind of like laughing but but then he would laugh and then start crying (laughs) because he didn't he was like i don't know if i'm ever gonna be able to have kids you're right yeah 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 yeah. it's scary we it was intense but it was it was one of the stories of the year for for our group stories of his life i bet i now, when you saw it, did you think that's terrifying? Also, you've got a decent piece. No, <laughs> no. I, I, in fact, I, now I had seen his dick before, um, and he, he it, you know, is nothing, nothing to write home about. about. But with its sort of deformity, mm-hmm. I, I was like whoa this is on this looks almost unsalvageable yeah that's um i would say one of the most terrifying things ever uh the only thing i think most men can even compare at all to that is you know maybe you get your dick caught in the zipper when you're younger i don't know if you've had that happen i had it once never 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 to the point where I had to like yank. Never, you know, a full. There's something about Mary situation. I had the skin in it once. It was bad. 
Oh, it sounds so horrific, dude. It was real bad. Oh. I was younger, so you know, enough stem cells for it to, you know, everything's okay. There's no scarring. But uh, it was, but yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the North South problem. And the, so that a lot of times with me, if, if she's going to be there, I go, Hey, I'm not really going to enjoy this that much. Just go ahead, do your East to West, do some circumnavigating. And then we're going to, we're going to switch because we're not going to be there the entire time. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd much rather. And also it gives you less control and yeah. I need control because I'm focusing the entire time on not just dumping and then looking like an idiot you know (laughs) i'm a sensitive boy all right (laughs) just dumping dude all right all right i have to ask you this and yes if this if this is too weird you can just cut it from the episode go ahead but i won't i won't say any names i ran i was out walking the dog before we moved to this new apartment and I, I was on the street and this girl came up to me. Okay. Yeah. And she was like, Oh my God, Francis, you know, yada, 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 yada. I am a, I know, I know she started naming all these people that she and I knew in common and top Mm -hmm. of the list was Mr. D pal himself. That's me. uh, Dylan Paladines. And um she was like i you know i hooked up with him or I, maybe she said she dated i i don't know i can't remember we did and not date he started giving me like details on the street about you know your sex life and oh how she would like blow you and all this now keep in mind i had not said a <laughs> word not a word I was like, I was kind of being like, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, I know him or whatever. I but don't want to know this. That's what you're thinking. <laughs> she's she's divulging uh-huh. just so much information about, you know, you two guys and all this. And I walked, it was like five minutes of being a, a, attacked with sexual <laughs> details that I had no, I had not asked for. Wow. Um and and then she we walked away or whatever and uh i i i saw her like a couple more times but it always kind of freaked me out and was weird so i wanted to see your thoughts on that um she told you she blew me yeah, she said, I think she said that she would, you know, she would do that. She she was kind of like going off of I think things that you had said on either your podcast or girls got to eat. <clears throat> it's where- wild. We hooked up one time after one date and we never saw each other again. Um, uh-huh. We've talked via text. She um, is a f- nice person. I have nothing horrible to say about her. She's sweet. She's got a podcast of her own. I won't say it, but the fact that she did that uh, doesn't surprise me and is also very troubling that she, I, I mean, we, we didn't have sex. Like that's, she said, wow. she said something about, um, she said something about how you had mentioned like issues that you'd had. Oh, oh, I've been very open about uh, issues, getting it up issues. Before yeah. And then, before, and yes. then she was like, she, she said that and then like went into crazy detail about it. Now, I don't, I don't want to like, listen, I don't give a fuck if, <laughs> if, if, if she hears this or yeah, no, no, because, nothing bad listen, it. listen, I'll say this directly to her. If she somehow hears this, why did you say that shit? To me? <laughs> why did you tell me that? Well, I didn't ask for that. I didn't want it. I was it's so weird. The dog. So I was weird. on the street. That's not information that you should be sharing with people you don't know. Sounds like a manic episode. <laughs> I, 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 I was so flabbergasted by it and I didn't know what to do with it. And, and um, so I'm glad I, I asked you about it because I, it has it's always been kind of weird to me. I didn't know why she like, whether you guys had a falling out or. We, we did. And then we became cool again a couple months later. But I think she saw you after we became cool. 
I, I, I really don't know. I don't understand how some people would think that that's cool. And also it's funny that for after that, you were just like, how do I casually mention to Dylan that I know he has trouble getting hard sometimes? <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, because, because, all right. What am I supposed to like? Keep it a secret for her. This no, this no, you got to say it. This stranger, am I supposed to be like, ah, don't worry, your your words are safe. With no, no, me? no, no, no. We're closer. You you tell me, and yeah. then yeah, and then I tell you that I'm pretty open about it, and I've used performance enhancing drugs many times, and I'm a big fan of them. Great. So yeah, I have a lot of I have a lot of friends, you know, who 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 use uh, the drugs and. Uh, they say that the biggest benefit is the resiliency that it is. They, they give you regenerative powers. That's that is, that is the biggest. Yes. Um, to uh, allow you to go for, for multiple rounds or something. That's what, that's the best part about it is that the refractory period seems to be uh, lessened. Well, I'd well, say. Still, let me ask you this. You're yes, yes, yes. Right. I'm 28. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes. 28. Okay, well, maybe it's different. What? Well, how, how many how many nuts do you need <laughs> a night, dude? How many nuts do you need, you fucking greedy bastard? Seriously, what, what, what? one good sexual session is here's, not enough for you? I'm saying, but here's the thing: you're. I think you're at a different point, not because of your age, but because of the relationship you're in. Okay. You're yeah, in a relationship. I've been I've been here for a while and, and it was when I exactly. was single, so. Oh, okay. Um usually for me it's once, but if I feel like I didn't fully give them the Dylan Paladino package, yeah, I gotta go again. Especially gave, yeah, I get it. Especially if um if they're new, it's much easier for me to go twice. Much, much easier. It's new. I still don't know everything. Let's try it out. I'm excited. I don't hate you yet. You know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, and if the girl hasn't finished, then I'm like, I need to at least try again to try and get her there. So she doesn't talk shit about me to her friends. It all comes back to me. Um, and, but if when I was with, when I was in a relationship or, or if it's with someone that I've been with for a good amount of time once, once is all I need. You know, I'm at the point now where I'm like, dude, let's do it. Let's have a good time. I also want to get a good amount of sleep. Yeah. I also um, have other things I want to do. I don't want to be fucking for two hours, an hour. I want to, you know, start it up. Let's get it. Three positions. You have a good time. I have a good time. Let's go. We're good. All right. Okay. Bring the vibrator in if you need it. I will say the last time. There was a time in the past four months that I, um, with it, let's see, eight o'clock to, to 10 a.m. Um, in 14 hours, it was four times. That's the most I've ever done. And that was a, that was a special occasion. That's like I don't, sixth grade when I discovered <laughs> masturbating. Like, I don't want that most of the time. Yeah. I want once. Maybe twice if we're in Tulum. I don't fucking know, but most, <laughs> you know. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't need it a, a lot because also yeah. I'm trying to make the one time good. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm I'm on your page for sure. But that yeah. that's also what like I'm not taking it to go multiple times. I'm taking it so I don't have to worry. Am I going to be able to perform? You know. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, I, that's why. I hear you. I hear you. That's good. Yeah, I, I, I never did it. I never tried it because I didn't want, I was very fearful that I would become reliant on it, on the drugs. I, that was why I, I was like, it felt like one of those things where once you pop, mm -hmm. you know, the fun don't stop. I, I, I just felt like I, I'd rather think, you know, things work for me. Uh, yes. And, and, yeah. And I'm not like what I'm, I'm not bragging. I'm not saying like, but like they work for, you know, the one, the once, once a night type of thing. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't feel like I needed more than that. Yeah. I mean, uh, it starts to ache. There's an ache. It's a deep ache. 
there's an ache and you know, did you get- I, I heard you, yeah. there's an ache. I mean, my calf has cramped up before yeah. going multiple it, times. You know, that, 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 that sort of subtle ache in the penis. Oh yeah. It, it's tired. Hurt. Your it's dick hurt. is tired. Yeah. Well, well, you'll get tired if you're using a PED because uh-huh. you'll be able to go and there'll be times when you're like, I'm not even really enjoying this, but I'm already in it. So I might as well just for my manhood, keep going. But I'm not going to lie. There have been times where I straight up couldn't feel my dick. And I just went, well, what are you going to do? You know, you just, <laughs> you finish, you enjoy the company. Wow. She looks so pretty. Okay. Let's just, uh, very, it's very generous. Of keep you. going. Keep going. But yeah, I've never been that. I, I, you probably had friends that were like, yeah, bro, we fucked all night, four hours. I was always the guy that in my head thought that sounds horrible. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I don't need that. You're just, you're just destroying your beds, your linens, you know, your bed, your linens, you're sweating, you're sweating on each other. The paper that's required. It's, uh, you know, if you have any concerns about deforestation, then, then, you know, it's the paper intake. I, you know, I personally, deforestation. Yeah, that's the stuff, man. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't be showering three times. You're wasting all that water. That's right. That's exactly. Right. And then, and then also it, it gets to the problem of, especially if you're using, uh, well, whether you're using protection or not, the second or third time, if you're yeah. going to be, you know, going down, you're, you're at that point dealing with different tastes, different yeah. materials, God. you know, yeah. I, I, God, the whole, room, the whole room smells like one of those. Um, I don't even know what sport this would be called, but do you remember on ESPN they used to air? It was like I, I guess it was drag racing, where there would be like two cars, mm-hmm. and then the lights would go, and then they would just go straight down the track, and then they burn. Yep, dude, the the burning of rubber. That's that's what it smells like. The burnt sexual rubber is not vile. good. It's vile. It's vile. You can smell it. You and you really smell it when you leave the room. And you yeah. come back in huh, and you go, it. oh man, what's, uh, what is going on? Yeah. That's who let a drag race happen in here. Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> is it some 4d movie where they also insert smells into here? I don't, I don't really, I, I don't, I don't really need that. I guess that's why they make different lubes that smell like, I don't know. Yeah. I've mm. always thought that was, but yeah, now you're, now you're into uh, a healthy, a uh, love life that's filled with uh, actual love making and and join the other person, which yeah. is always nice. It and is. then, but but then after oh you know it's it's it it is different. <laughs> it is. There's no disgust after though. What I'll say is nice. Yeah. The single life there can be disgust. Right. Um, yeah. dude, I got a I got a bolt. I hate cool. to say it. No uh, worries. But this was a lot of fun, man. Of course. Uh, Why don't you take us out of here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But you can find Francis online at it's Francis C. Ellis, right? I think it's Francis C. C. Ellis. I just said C. Never. Yeah. What's oh, it's a typo because your middle name is a C. It is. I only meant to have one C in there. Uh, That's confusing. Well, Francis C. C. Ellis, uh, you can listen to uh, his own podcast. Oops. Oh, oh, podcast with Julio yes. Gallarati. Julio Gallarati, who I think I'll be having on as well. I want to talk about his little trip, uh, COVID. Yeah, his, his yeah. little uh, COVID trip. And uh, I hope to see you in person sometime soon and uh, safer. Maybe we'll both be vaccinated. Who the fuck knows? It was a blast. Awesome. It was so much fun, terrible. man. Thanks Thank for you. I loved me, it. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk yeah. to you soon, right? All right.